So guys, uh, welcome back, Riptide Real Talk. Our second guest is Anna Weiss. Welcome, Anna. Um, I think most of you know her already, but in case you don't, we're gonna get to know her a little bit more. Let's start with uh, just telling us a little bit more about your history with Riptide. When did you start with Riptide? So I started Riptide when I was 15 years old. I'm 22 now. I remember my sailing coach, he was, he did CrossFit himself. He was like, well, you can up your level of fitness, you know, doing CrossFit. And so um, I looked into it more and my brother looked into it more and I kind of became obsessed with it before I even started. So we came in here um, and honestly the first day I did it I fell in love and I've been in love with it ever since. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and prior to that you were, you were doing competitive sailing already, right? Yes, yes. So I mean I've been sailing since I was eight years old. Eight. Um, and so been competing ever since sort of the beginning um, and I didn't really take sailing seriously I think until I started CrossFit because I started seeing more results and I was getting fitter and stronger and it really translated over to my sailing and so I think that's I think that's a part of why I love CrossFit so much is because I know it helped me a lot in my sailing journey and it's um, awesome yeah. during your sailing journey into CrossFit, at what point did you hear, learn, or get to know Anna Tunningcliffe? And uh, for those of you who may not know, Anna Tunningcliffe is also a gold medal sailor and a CrossFit Games athlete, multiple years. Mm -hmm. She's been to the Games multiple times. So how did you meet her? Okay, so I've actually known Anna since I was, like, started to sail. So okay. she moved to Fort Lauderdale and was training out of Florida Yacht Club where I grew up sailing. And um, something really common amongst, like if you're Olympic campaigning, you'll coach kind of the up and coming and you'll train out of that club. And so she actually taught me when I was really young. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, and I remember she came and spoke at our Yacht Club when she won the gold medal in 2008. Um, and I have a photo with her with the gold medal around my neck. Oh, that's cool. And, um, and so, so, she she taught me then and then kind of our we didn't really cross paths again until high school and then she coached me again as i was doing more youth world stuff um and so i got to know her more then again and so um we've been really close ever since and so it's kind of how cool was it <laughs> when you found out she made it to the crossfit games that was that was insane i mean i i've always kind of looked up to her obviously um because who wouldn't but when, when she went to the games, I was like, well, maybe, maybe that's something I can do, you know, go to the Olympics and then go to the CrossFit Games. And, um, and when she won the games, because she won the Masters right. two years in a row, that was even more insane. And I was just like, yeah. oh. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So then you're sailing, you're doing CrossFit. Mm. At what point in your sailing career does like, it start to materialize or become a realistic goal for you to try to qualify to the Olympics? I think when I started CrossFit, it was already a big stepping stone for me and I started seeing results and I think the biggest struggle I had was sailing. Um, I've always loved it and it would always click sort of naturally for me, but I, I was never really seeing results and I wasn't, I wasn't really sure why. And so once I realized that I was putting in the work and putting that with with what I had already learned throughout my years of sailing, um, I started, started finally seeing results. So I think the point I realized that I really wanted to go to the Olympics and, and win a gold medal was my Youth Worlds in 2017 in Ireland. And I had been training so hard all summer on fitness, sailing, everything, you know, putting, putting in a lot of hours. Um, and I ended up sailing really, really, really well, and I finished, I think I finished eighth overall, um, but the re I, th I guess the results don't show how well I was sailing um, for me personally, and I think at that moment I knew that I could achieve going to the Olympics and winning a medal, and going into the last day I was in, I was in a position to win the worlds actually before the last race and I made a mistake which put me in eighth but um, I think that moment kind of was 
the key um, and motivator to... That's cool to hear that even though you didn't win, you still had that same like that same sensation or feeling mm -hmm. that you were good enough. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't win, I made a mistake, but like we all do, I'm sure mm -hmm. you've learned from that mistake. And um, super cool to hear that in a moment where you actually lose mm -hmm. the position, you gain the fire. Yeah, and I was, I was seriously gutted. And I know like now it maybe seems silly because of the youth world, but at the time, you know, like the youth world is the highest level you can achieve, right? And to be uh, a youth world champion, it's a big deal. And so, um, I mean, I was seriously gutted after the event, and all I wanted to do was just go out and like prove myself that I actually could win, you oh, yeah. know, win an event. Um, and so I think, I think because I knew inside that I, I could have won, that was what really motivated me to keep going and and push me because I just wanted to keep achieving that goal. Yeah, you know? for sure. That's awesome. So then we'll fast forward a little bit to this. Um, latest qualifying situation. Mm -hmm. You qualified for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics last year. This this year, well, qualifications ended when? This February. February. Cool. Yeah. So because the games were supposed to be this July. Right. Um, and so our qualification ended February. Cool. Um, How long were you training with your partner, um, Gibbs? How long did you train with him? into qualifying spots. So we're actually a really, really, really new team. So we started in January of 20, January of 2019. So the boat that I sail, the NACRA 17, um, I've never sailed it in my life. So it's all very, very new to me. And it was a lot of learning that had to be done. Um, and compared to other teams, they've been sailing together for years, you know? Um, so. They know you how guys to, were like at a disadvantage or the other dog. Right, right, exactly. Like we, we kind of, but at the same time, we kind of had nothing to lose. You know, like whatever. You know, we're right. just gonna, we're just, just gonna go send it. it. Yeah, send it. Um, Love it. And so, <laughs> um, we've we trained really hard. You know, we had a lot of bumps in the road, um, kind of unexpected, but we, I think our actually our our second event. It was after a month of training together, so it was in, it was in March. Um, well, I guess two months, but um, in March we went to Spain, and we finished top American and eleventh overall amongst the world. And so the, all the best guys were there, and we had only been sailing a month together. And I think the moment we realized, we're like, wow, this could be, we we can we can achieve something great here. Like we we're a, we're a month or two in. You know, we're and we're already and we're already you know competing with the top guys and, and getting good results. Some moments, and so I think at that moment we're like, wow, we can like we believe in ourselves and we just got to put in the work and we can achieve amazing things. So that's freaking awesome. <laughs> and so you're still training. You do you you competed that event. When did the gold medal come into play? What event was that? So that was at the Pan American Games, and in the summer, right? In the summer, and 2019. And so we were down in Panama, Colombia. It was it was in um, Paracas, Peru. Okay. So the Peru, that's right. It was in Lima. The games were in Lima, that's but right, we yeah. had a satellite village about four hours away. Right. But be, prior to that, I actually ended up having surgery on both of my arms. That's right. I remember um, your surgery. Yeah. Tell so, us a little bit about what happened briefly. Yeah. So basically, I the just the, like my body and the way it's built, my t the tissue. That's like so your tissue that surrounds your muscle, um, it's like a really thick layer, and so essentially what would happen is when I, I would use my arms, it would just compress on the nerve and I couldn't grip anything, and it'd just be excruciating pain. Like my arm would be like a rock because there's so much pressure. So basically what they did, they just cut the tissue, and so now um, my muscle can expand and not have to compress on my nerve. The amount of load that I'm holding in in the sail, it was right. Just like, Every, it's so much grip, right? right? Yeah, and so my muscle was just getting bigger and bigger, and just the way my body was built, it was just. I couldn't manage it anymore, and so it got to the point where like I kind of had to stop sailing or get the surgery. And so the timeline was very tight for me to get surgery. Recover. So, yeah, recover and go to the Pan Am Games. And so um, it was actually really stressful time because obviously I wanted to go. It was really scary and ended up being the best decision of my life. Clearly, I have no more issues anymore. But it was a really important event because 
well, one, we had qualified, and so we wanted to go represent our country. So that was the qualifier to, to qualify the United States for the Olympics. So okay. we individually had to qualify after we had qualified that spot at the Pan Am Games. So what do you mean? You went as a team. So we went as a team. We needed to qualify. So the way it works is even if another team had gone to the Pan Am Games and qualified the country, no matter what had happened there, we still needed to individually qualify as a team. So the Pan Ams was our country qualifier, and then we had two world championships that decided which American team would go. Got it, got it. So at the Pan Am Games, the U.S. qualifies. Yes. And then there's another event where then the U.S. needs to decide which of the U.S. Correct. teams is going to represent the country. Correct. So a lot, a lot of people were like, oh, congratulations, you're going to the games. We're like, well, not yet. Yes. We won the gold um, medal. So you won a gold yes, medal. We did win a gold medal at the Pan Am Games. So that was, it was amazing because, you know, everything that we had gone through as a team and the surgery and the fact that, I mean, the doctor, the surgeon told me that I wasn't going to be able to go to the games. So um, that was Scary, but worked really hard on the recovery, and it paid um, off. And it paid off. So um, it was. I think that's to this date the, the most exciting and coolest moment of the campaign was stepping on the podium um, and winning the gold medal. And when you know, the doctor told you, <laughs> when the doctor you can't told even me, compete. you're not going to be able to go. It's going to be too soon. Did yeah. you kiss the gold medal? And be like, this is a <laughs> shout out to my surgeon. Thank you, but yeah. proved you wrong. Yeah. Um, no, but in all seriousness, he, he cleared me. So, um, it was, yeah, that was something super special. So it just makes, makes me want to go do that again in Tokyo next oh, yeah. year. Yeah. So speaking of Tokyo, <clears throat> um, kind of a good segue into what's going on now. And before mm-hmm. we go into like what's happening with the Olympics in Tokyo, tell us how you've been coping with coronavirus, right? Have you prioritized anything differently, special? You're not going out on the water to sell, correct? No. So how have you been taking care of like your training, either physically or mentally? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of workouts, at-home workouts. So um, we have a bike, and we have a set of dumbbells and a kettlebell. So I've been making do with that. And um, so typically my day will look like doing a long bike in the morning, you know. Um, been really trying to build that base of fitness because it's a perfect time to do so because usually when we're training on the water you know our training sessions are three three and a half hours almost four hours sometimes and so it's very exhausting really tiring so we don't really have I guess I guess you wouldn't have that much energy in the day to be doing you know a two-hour bike in the morning a training session in the day and then doing another gym session at night right um and maybe hopefully one day you know, we could build it out. I'm not even sure what my body is capable of, but um, for now, you know, just just building that base of fitness and then doing a lot of kind of um, grip strength work. So when I get back into the boat, it's not a total shock to my system. And then we've also been doing some webinars. So Yo Sailing has been presenting us with these amazing webinars. So people who have gone to the Olympics are professional sailors. You know, all all these people give all their insights on different topics, whether it's um, tactics, strategy, you know, weather, you know, we had a talk, Anna was actually gave a talk, like, becoming a champion, you know, um, and, and, like, what it, what it takes to kind of, you know, get to the top and mindset. be the best, yeah, mindset, so all these different talks, and, and they're almost daily, um, and so that's been really, you know, helping us stay in touch with sailing, and so when we go back, we, we're, we're still, you know, in the loop of things. Relevant. It's not like, yeah, exactly. So just trying to stay kind of engaged as much possible, as much as possible um, with sailing and in touch with that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's hard sometimes, you know, it's hard to. What, what have like, been, so now that you're saying it's hard, yeah. have you been struggling with anything? Obviously the entire world, it's a world mm-hmm. pandemic, right? So everyone right. is struggling with something. What have been struggles particular to you yeah. during this pandemic i think for me is kind of i mean you wake up every day and you're like okay i'm gonna like go work out you know i'm gonna listen to the webinar and this and it's it's like you're going through the motions but i think for me kind of just staying in touch with what i'm doing rather than just going through the motions um you know it's not it's not easy to like i, I mean it's so much easier to just go and stay and lie on the couch you know you're not going anywhere and but um at that point, you just kind of get have to get up and go do it, you know. And so I think that's been the hardest part. And 
Also, when we are training, you know, our days are super packed, super busy. And so now you kind of, you don't really know what to do with yourself almost because you have extra time on your hands. And so I think for me is like, am I doing something that's going to benefit me? And I feel like a lot of the time, well, maybe I'm not, you know, like I could not be watching Netflix sometimes, you know, but at the same time, you know, we have extra time in our day. And so maybe now is the time to watch Netflix because when we're training, I don't have time to yeah. watch Netflix. So um, it's kind of balancing that and, and I think mentally is the hardest part. It's just, am I doing the right things or am I not? And we, we have no idea, right? Um, but yeah, who's who's out there telling you what the right thing to do, right, you know, wrong, this shouldn't do that. Right, right. And it's, it's like it's say. like we can't we can't be sailing right now. I mean, it's it's just kind of the reality. And I think part of how I'm coping or I don't know if coping's the right word, but it's just reminding myself that I can't control any of this what's happening. Um, and I know everyone's in the same situation. It's not like I'm in this alone. Right. You know? Um, Do you guys have an idea of, um, <clears throat> have they said anything to you yet when um, the ocean will be open and you guys will access your boats and marinas and be able to sail? Have an idea, um, a guesstimate? I, I don't know. I think everything's still unknown. And I think as a U.S. sailing team, we're doing everything that we can. Um, you know, we're not going to do anything super. We're not going to go out sailing when they say we can't. Um, we're not going to travel unless it's, we feel comfortable and it's right. safe. Um, so it's still a bit of an unknown, but, um, I mean, we talked about this a little earlier, but <laughs> the games are postponed. So if so, have they given you guys uh, dates when the next games are going to, yeah. So it's actually the same exact time frame. So July 23rd, uh, will be the opening ceremonies next year, 2021, 2021 in Tokyo, in Tokyo. Um, so yes, like they're, they're, they seem like far time away. But I know they're going to start creeping up. But also at the same time, we need to be smart. Because if we go, if I went and flew to, you know, California and started sailing right now, and then, you know, if I, something happened to me, got sick, you know, it just sets us back even more. Right. So right. You gotta be I think smart. we're just putting everything into perspective doing. and making sure that we're all safe and healthy before we go back training. Um, but I'm excited to go back whenever we do. <laughs> right. Where does most of your training occur? So... Typically, well, this past year, actually, we were traveling all around just because of the way the events were, and we haven't done a lot of domestic training, meaning just in these United States, and now we're going to be going to Long Beach, California, and Riley's actually from there, and so the sailing's really great there in the summer, and so we'll probably do majority of our training out there during the summer, and then we'll probably come back here, um, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, to do training in the winter because the sailing is really good here. Um, and it's very similar to Japan. I mean, it's hot, humid, wavy, out in the ocean. So awesome. Um, we'll get really good conditions, similar to J Japan. So it's I think good. a lot of it is going to be stateside, especially since n not many events are planned, obviously, because of this whole thing. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if you um, we're apparently approaching the country's looking to reopen soon. Within a few weeks here, things are starting to like move forward. So there's a sense out there that we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. with this world pandemic. Obviously, we won't really go back to fully normal until we have a vaccine. But from here until then, you know, how if you had to set a goal for yourself mm -hmm. on how you would like to finish this like quarantine transition into training again, what goal would you set for yourself? What would you like? How would you like to finish the quarantine and start resuming training again? I think just staying as fit as possible, <laughs> getting as fit as I can. Um, and I mean, I have, I have lots of little goals for myself, but I think that's one main thing for me because that's something that I can control right now. Right. <clears throat> um, and I think one of our, our Olympic head coach, he, he said it kind of best on one of our webinars. Um, he said, you know, it, it, he just said like, you need to think about it like, do you want to come out of this fitter? And I think we should be coming out of this quarantine fitter than we've ever been because at this point in time, like we have nothing else to do but beginning as fit as possible. Out. And so I think he said it really well and, and I really took that seriously and I think I think I am taking that seriously. Um, that's awesome. And so I think that's kind of one of my priorities. <laughs> Good. Um, so we're going to see you a lot in the gym when we open up here. Yes. <laughs> Good. Good stuff. And you guys heard it, right? Um, 
something I'd like to share with you guys is as she's saying this, as you're saying this, I really love that because a lot of people are actually thinking of it the opposite. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm less fit because I'm not lifting as many weights, mm-hmm. right? Because don't, we don't have barbells at home or whatever. Uh, we don't have the pull-up rig to do all the gymnastics. But your conditioning, your calisthenics, your body weight mm-hmm. movements, there's so many other ways to actually come out of the quarantine better than we were before. So I love that you shared that with us and um, hopefully a lot of you guys follow Anna's example. <laughs> Yeah, Thank and you. I think I think another thing is just to add on that really quickly. Yeah. Um, like a lot of things that we can't really work on in the gym are things that we typically wouldn't come in here and work on. Right. Like so, I mean, I don't know. For me, a lot of core work, you know, and a lot of, I guess, specific body weight exercises like handstands. You know, like my sister and I are sometimes practicing handstands. That's like, awesome. Oh, I get good at. Hell yeah. But it's like I feel like a lot of times we just come in here. You know, we we do cleans and snatches and yeah. pull-ups and all the stuff, all the things we have access to, but when we're at home, we never really have access to that. So I For think sure, for sure. I love that. Working on different things. It's kind of fun, too. I think it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you've done CrossFit long enough, too, to understand how you always need to be working on everything, right? Just mm-hmm. take this opportunity to always yeah. work on the things. Okay, well, what, I, what do I don't do when I take a class at the gym? Mm-hmm. What can I yeah. do it out at home? It's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's good having you here. We're really excited for you. And, um, you know, Riptide is always going to be your home. So um, I'm looking forward to having you in, in our classes and training and, you know, slinging weights and doing your thing. <laughs> and, um, and hopefully throughout the year, we're able to support each other, support you. And um, Jul- July when? 23rd. July 23rd. Ceremonies. So now you guys know, maybe we can start a group of people planning a trip, go support. <laughs> Phil may be going out too, right? Yeah. Hopefully, um, nice. As you guys saw, Phil in the last Riptide Real Talk, he's also um, an Olympic sailing coach, and um, his brother's trying to qualify. He is. He is. So um, I don't know what happened with that. We gotta ask Phil with that. But yeah, they're they're still in the middle of their trial, so they're trying to figure all that out. Okay. Um, it's a lot of unknown. So uh, yeah, but awesome. Good having you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And I'll see you at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys.